welcome. And this will be the first in a series of, of health talks that we're going to be doing. So um, we're going to cover some of the areas where all the areas we see up here are so gluten-free, dairy-free, alkaline, acidic, and so forth. Now, they all look pretty benign, don't they? Gluten-free, dairy-free. But if I were to tell you that if we stick with the gluten, if you stick with the dairy, if you do the acidic, if you do the, um, the GMO, not the non-GMO, but GMO, those are all causes, or at least contributions to heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. And big causes of it. Now why would that be? Anybody knows? <laughs> They're all inflammatory. And inflammation is, is usually the cause behind that. And then we get you know, other intestinal problems and so forth. So, so we're going to try to cover some of these. So if we look at gluten, this is for celiac disease. But anybody that has celiac disease obviously has a problem with gluten. So gluten is, is a protein. I'm not sure if you knew that, but it's a protein. Now, so do we have a problem breaking down the protein? Or is there a problem with the gluten itself? So do we have a stomach problem? Do we have a problem with acid in the stomach? Do we have a problem with digestive enzymes? Is that why we can't break it down? Or is it the way they grew it? So 90 plus percent of the wheat, barley, or rye that's grown out there is grown by Monsanto. So they're allowed to spray Roundup on all the fields before harvest. And the Roundup will soak up into the grains and then we'll eat that. Now, has anybody here used Roundup? Yeah. Great. Doesn't smell very good, right? Now, and we don't drink it, but they want us to eat it. If you take a look at um, you know, some of the things here for, for um, celiac disease, um, I mean, headaches, iron deficiency, joint and muscle pain, dermatitis, weight gain, all those different things. So that, that doesn't come from the gluten itself. It comes from what the gluten does to your intestinal tract. So we get leaky gut syndrome. So we get it, instead of having a nice smooth surface in the intestinal tract, it looks like bad asphalt with lots of fissure and cracks and stuff like that. And then when we eat something, say with, with gluten, they will go in and it literally gets stuck in the intestinal tract. And then the blood on the other side is going to sense that. And now we're going to have a reaction to that. So we form antibodies against that. So if you, take, if you take gluten, if it looks like this, it doesn't. But if it does, or if it did. See, if this is a gluten, with protein gluten. Now, if you have similar proteins that only have this much, now you're going to start to react to that too. And we're going to cover that. That's, that's a cross reaction to that. So if you have a problem with gluten, we shouldn't have it. <coughs> If you have a problem breaking it down, then we need to work on that so we can actually help the stomach so it works better. But no matter what, we should try to stay away from the stuff that we sprayed with the synthetic pesticides or the Roundup. Dairy. So what's dairy? Where does it come from? Cows. cows. Right. Yeah. So what do cows eat? Cows. What do cows eat? <laughs> grass. 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 Grass, right? They should eat grass. But do they? No. no. So grass is what they should have. That's where they have four stomachs, right? So they can digest it and, you know, go through the whole process. Now, cows now are fed corn and soy, but it's GMO corn and soy. So it's not regular corn and soy. And then we're going to get that. They also feed the cows or give them antibiotics and what else? Hormones. So when you have a cow that's fed hormones, it gets heavier. So they can sell it for more, right? It can also produce more, more milk. So that those are the things that we want to be aware of. So if we don't eat dairy, less bloating. So why would we be bloated if we, if we eat dairy? Can't digest. Right. So again, lactose is a protein. So we have different reasons for this. Either we cannot digest it because we don't have enough acid, or we don't have enough digestive enzymes, or it's because we, eat, we get the milk from that cow that's been fed hormones, antibiotics, and GMO food. <coughs> so again, if you're going to eat dairy, we want to be sure that we try to get it as healthy as we can. And, um, you know, they have grass-fed cows. They have, you know, different things you can look at to see if, if you eat the right things. Better for respiratory health. So why would we have problems breathing if we drink milk? It creates mucus. 
and also cause irritation sometimes, right? So we get basically a reaction to what we eat. Improved digestion, same thing there. If you can't break it down, you're going to have intestinal problems. Um, clearer skin, it all comes back to the same things. If you have a leaky gut caused by our inability to digest it or where the cows came from, um, that's going to affect the whole body, not just the digestive system. So may, may reduce the risk of cancer. It's kind of what I touched at in the beginning when I said this can cause cancer. So all these different things. Now, all the hormones, all the, the pesticides and everything else that's been used for the genetically modified food, we all get to eat that. So we shouldn't, but we do. What is cross-reactivity? Have you guys heard about that? Do you know what that is? Remember I did this? That's a protein, right? So if this is, see this is gluten. It's part of the wheat. Now, and that's what they talk about here. If part of that hormone, um, part of that, that the protein is also present in other foods, we can take a look here. So cow's milk, oats, yeast, coffee. If they have this part of it, and we started reacting to this, we're going to react to this part too. So as it goes through the bloodstream, the body says, uh oh, don't like that. And it recognizes what's coming through next time. So now if you have quinoa, or you have um, you know, yeast or anything like that, now you're going to start to react to that too. So it starts out that the gluten reaction, but then all of a sudden you have a hard time eating anything because your body starts reacting to part of that protein that you take in, that food that you take in. So this is really important. This is when you see people and they say, okay now, I know I'm gluten intolerant or I'm, I'm lactose intolerant, but all of a sudden I can't eat this or I can't eat that. You could before, but now you can't. And that's because you start to react to more and more things. So, okay, next one. pH. So, should the body be acid or should the body be alkaline? Alkaline. Okay, and what about the stomach? Should the stomach be acid or the stomach be alkaline? Acid. Yes. So, if the stomach is acid, we can break down the food. And that's what I was saying in the beginning, too. If you don't have enough acid, we can't break it down. Um, and if you can't break it down, if the stomach is alkaline, we're going to have problems with digesting the food. And... Um, we're basically going to be gaining weight from doing that. Now, I've said this to a lot of people, most of you have probably heard it, but if you take a glass of water and you put some sugar in there, you put a few drops of olive oil, and you put a piece of chicken, and then you walk away for about half an hour. And when you come back, what are you going to see in the glass? You're going to see the chicken, you're going to see the olive oil, but you're not going to see the sugar, because sugar dissolves in water. So if you have a stomach that's full of water and no acid, what are we going to digest? Sugar, right? Eh? So if we take like bread, we're going to break down the sugar part and we're going to digest that. If we have, um, if we have a great meal with, you know, we might have steak and we might have potatoes, we might have vegetables and so forth, we're going to absorb some of the sugar, but the rest of it is just going to go right by. So when we eat and we think, okay, we have a great meal, but about half an hour, an hour, maybe an hour and a half after that, we get hungry again, and we want sugar. The only reason you get hungry is when blood sugar drops. So when blood sugar drops, what do you want to eat? More sugar. So then we have something else to eat, right? But if your stomach doesn't work, we're going to keep doing that roller coaster up and down. So we want to be sure that the pH is right, and that's really important. So balanced pH 6 point, well, 6, 6, 8 to 7, 2. Uh, and that can go both for oral pH and urine pH. So you can actually check that. And I recommend that if you want to see how healthy you are, you check that, say, once a day, uh, same time. So at 5 o'clock in the afternoon or before you go to bed or whatever it is, but check it every day. And once you start changing your diet, you're going to see that that pH is going to change. And as you feel better and better, you're going to see that pH going more and more towards neutral. Now, if it's really acidic, over on this side, you're not going to feel very well. Everything is going to be, you're going to have that upset stomach, you're going to have all those things going on, because it's the body that's acidic, not the stomach. Now things like, um, how if you take um, colds, cancers, infections, inflammation, they don't do very well in an alkaline environment. But if you're acidic, they thrive on that. So what about sugar? Is it acidic or alkaline? Acidic. Yes, it's acidic. So again, sugar will, will cause it to have problems. All right, next one. Now, 
This is an alkaline food list, and some of you have probably gotten this already from us. But basically what you want to do is, from here and over to your left, should be 80% of what you eat. From here and over this way, should be 80% of what you eat. On the right hand side, is the acidic food, and that could be 20%. Now, so it doesn't mean that you have to stay away from everything on the right side, you just want to show you balance it out. So, if you look at things here, so we got, you know, wheatgrass, all the, the grass, all the dark greens you're going to see here, so kale and kelp and spinach and parsley and so forth. Those are really good, and you can even, things that you really like, right? <laughs> but you can hide this in a shake. Again, you can have most of it from this side, and try the alkaline, but add some other flavors from the other side, if you want to do that. But these are really important. Now, if you look at this one, all the way over to the other side, right? So we have mustard, and we have beef, and we have chicken, and we have eggs. All the things that we like to eat. That doesn't mean that we can't have it, we just got to mix it up with this. So if we have a meal where we have steak, we want to add some of these things over here to, to balance that out. Or if we have, you know, cranberries, it's still on the acidic side, right? So add some more things over here. Have a salad with lettuce. And that's going to help balance it out. But no, but this will help get your body to be alkaline and your stomach to be acidic. So it doesn't have to be just supplements or, or you know, medications that we take. We can do it just by changing our diet. Okay, next one. So this is more of a detail list. You guys have copies of this one too. So this is even more things you can eat that's alkaline. So if you do this, you're going to see Again, a change, and this should be 80%, and then the next one, and this should be 20%. And I know some of you guys had this stuff, right? <laughs> so, so um, now, if you look at this one here, is it all bad? Yeah, <laughs> see, that's what I mean. It's not all bad, right? There, there's some green stuff in there. But if you're going to have that, we want to be sure that we mix it up with something else. So we get, get the benefits of it. And that doesn't mean that you have to do this all the time, but as much as you can. And the, the better you are in making those choices, the better you're going to feel. So, all right, next one. Now, look at the top tips. So if you look at this here, fruits. Now, I don't agree with everything that's on this, on this sheet. Fruits, I think, are good to eat. Now, are they acidic? Yes. So should we have a whole bunch of them? Probably not, but they're also full of vitamins and minerals. So if you have a choice between a cookie or an apple, <laughs> no, not, not a cookie. <laughs> you want to do the apple if that's the case, right? So if we make choices, or, <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. And then here, number two, I thought it was acidic. Now, if you look at, they talk about lemon, lime, and tomatoes. So. So some of these things are very acidic, but they're also full of alkaline minerals. So you eat them, and they're acidic. But then as they go through the digestive tract, they have a lot of alkaline minerals, so now you become alkaline. Hmm. So lemon is... Lemon is actually not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. So even though it's acidic, it's alkaline. A little confusing, but that, that's kind of how it works. So um, if, you, if you look at this, you can't just go by high tastes. You have to kind of look at the list and see how it works. Now, soy and soy sauce, I don't like that for many reasons. We talked about how it's genetically modified. And um, soy in general is there's a lot of women right now that should not be taking soy. And the reason is breast cancer. A lot of women that have had breast cancer have basically a breast cancer that that's, thrives on estrogen. So they want to stay away from everything that has to do with, with estrogen on the, uh, or soy that causes estrogen production or increased estrogen. Tea and coffee, like that. I grew up on coffee, more or less. Um, it's very acidic, so you want to be careful with that too, right? There's some things you can, can have, but again, if you're going to have that, have something else to counterbalance it with. Now, bread. Is bread acidic or alkaline? It's acidic. But like it says here, if you do sprouted breads, it's mildly alkaline. So again, it's not that you have to stay away from things, just make wise choices when you do this. Hydration. Um, I usually push drinking water. Now, should we drink <coughs> tap water? Tap water is full of a bunch of chemicals, right? But it also has a lot of minerals. 
but we should still not have it. I think it's more dangerous to drink it. But so we filter it out and we filter out all the minerals. So we probably need to add some of that. The minerals are alkaline. Growing up, we drank nothing but tap water. If someone said that I was going to pay for water, I would thought they were completely out of their minds. So um, we grew up doing that, and it was straight from the tap. Now here, water doesn't taste that great, so we don't. And once we get the filter water again, we don't get all the minerals that we should have. All right, does anybody know about this one? How to identify conventional organic and GMO produce. Huh. Does anybody know what GMO is? Genetically modified. Yes. Is it good for us? No. 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 <laughs> Why isn't it good for us? Yeah, it's not a nature-made product. It's something that we genetically changed. It's gene splicing. So what they do is basically take and change it. Uh, initially, they said it's to feed Veneti. But if you look at organically or genetically modified, um, it's usually a bigger size. It's brighter. It looks better. But it has a whole lot less nutrients. And some studies even say it has, has no more than 50% or what you get from the regular food. So if it's for the purpose of feeding the needy, you have to eat twice as much. So it doesn't make any sense if you look at it that way. So most of it is it's easier to grow it. They can use more pesticides without the plants dying. They, have to pay, they can pay less attention to it and just basically grow it and harvest it and, and then sell it. Now, if you look at the coats, if you talk about bananas here, so if you look at these labels up here, it starts with a nine, right? But if we were to start with a four, that means that it's just a standard banana, but they can use all the pesticides and everything else on it. Now, if it starts with a nine, what does that mean? Organic. Yes, it's organic. That means if it's organic, they cannot use, it cannot be GMO'd, and they cannot use pesticides on it. Now, what if it starts with an eight? It's GMO. So that means that it's genetically modified. Now, they might not want to put that up in the store, but if you look at the label, you're going to see it. So this is Proposition 37 did not come through, right? They tried to push it through, but it didn't happen. But we can still look at the labels up there, and we can see what the numbers are. So we don't know for 100% you know, if you're going to get the right thing, if you're going to get the wrong thing. But the chance of getting the organic is greater if it says organic on it. Now, next slide. Yeah, so we're going to come to the other one. This is Dirty Dustin and Clean 15. So, pesticides in produce. Now, so if you, Dirty 12 or Dirty Dustin are the ones that you want to try to stay away from. Well, be sure you really clean them up and, and wash them up. But you want to get these organic if you can because they don't have the pesticides on them. Now, the Clean 15, they don't absorb as much. So you're going to have less problems with those. Even if you buy them just with a four code, not for organic, but just for regular ones. So you're going to have less issues with those. Be sure you can get these organic. Be sure you get those any which way you want, basically. All right, next one. Okay, so this one is um, the shopping list. So these are things that you can take. This is one of the detox. Um, programs that we've used, the one you, you talked about. Mm -hmm. So this is basically what they recommend if you're going to clean up what you have going on. These are the foods you want to stay with. Now they add some shakes and so forth, but we found that if you just do the shopping list in itself, that makes a huge difference. Now it might not seem that difficult, but if we're used to eating hamburgers and steak and, and you know all that stuff, it, it takes some, some work to get that to, um, to work out especially if you have a family at home. If you get kids and everything else, it's not that easy. But you can still have chicken, you can have lamb, you can have turkey, buffalo. So, so those, those are the things. So if you look at this one here, this is what you want to look for. These are the labels that you want to look at. So if it says USDA organic, it has to be organic. It cannot be GMO'd. They cannot use any chemicals on it or synthetic chemicals. So when you do that, when you see this label up here, you're pretty sure that what you eat is organic. Now, I'm not sure how they tested before, but there's got to be some testing procedures to, to get that stamp on it. Now, non-GMO, does that mean it's organic? No. No, it doesn't. 
So if it's not, you know, if it's not organic, they can still use all the pesticides on it, since all the synthetic stuff can be used. So you want to be sure that you try to shoot for USDA organic, and if you can't do that, at least do the non-GMO, so you get the benefits from that too. All right, next one. Now this one I like. This one should scare you. So this one talks about an experiment or, or a study that was done on 168 pigs that would just get off you know, the, the breast milk, basically. And um, they fed half of them non-GMO and the other half GMO'd, soy and corn. And um, this is what happened. So female pigs had a uterus that was 25% larger in GMO pigs. That's huge. Now, does that mean that that same thing happens to women? It should. I mean, pigs and, and people are very similar on the inside when it comes to that. So, does that mean that women that have a problem being um, having a baby or getting pregnant, could this have something to do with that? I would expect it, it would be that way. Now, if you look at the next one, female pigs are 2.2 times more likely to get severe stomach inflammation. Not just mild, but severe stomach inflammation. And males are four times more likely to get severe stomach inflammation. So now again, we go back to the leaky gut. We go back to bloating. We go back to stomach pain in general, uh, indigestion, heartburn. I mean, all the things that we hear people talk about all the time. And this is just from GMO and just corn and soy. So those are, I mean, just look at the pictures. Those are scary looking. All right, next one. So autoimmune condition, what is that? So if you take a look at things like uh, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition. Fibromyalgia is an autoimmune condition. Uh, lupus is an autoimmune condition. So if you look at this, if you look at what we just talked about with leaky gut, with the GMO, with the gluten in, in, you know, sensitivity, um, lactose problems, not being able to digest it, we're going to have all these foods going through the intestinal tract, causing irritation, causing more inflammation, and now we're going to start to react to different things. And the body says, okay, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm going to attack. And it starts producing these antibodies, and they're going to start attacking everything else they can get in contact with. And it could be joints, it could be skin, it could be anything else, really. And that's autoimmune condition, or autoimmune disease. So if you look at here, brain, headaches, anxiety, brain fog, skin, acne, psoriasis, dermatitis, um, for sinuses, allergies, asthma, thyroid, fatigue, hyperactivity, weight gain or loss, joints and muscle, uh, muscle pain and weakness, uh, adrenals, feeling wired and tired, exhaustion, and GI tract, uh, stomach cramping, bloating, constipation, gas, and diarrhea. So these are pretty much everything that we've talked about. Just real simple. And all these things, if you let them you know, keep going, you're going to end up having the serious condition that we talked about. But you can also get all the inflammation that's going to cause, can cause you to have heart disease because it's based on inflammation, inflammation of the arteries. So the more inflammation we have, the more inflammation we get in the arteries, the more plaque buildup we're going to get, and all of a sudden we have heart disease. Cancer, what causes cancer? Everything. Inflammation. <laughs> So we get an abnormal cell formation. So cells grow that shouldn't be there, and now we get cancer. Now, what about diabetes? So what causes diabetes? Inflammation. Well, part of it, right? The pancreas might not secrete enough insulin, but before that, now we have all the things. Remember I said when the food can't break down, can't be broken down in the stomach because you don't have enough acid or don't have enough digestive enzymes? What do we break down? What do we absorb? Sugar. Sugar. And if you keep going with that, we're just going to be living on sugar. And we're going to be unhealthy, you know, more and more unhealthy on that. And we're going to have more of a leaky gut, and we're going to get sicker and sicker. So that's why everything has to work together. Okay, next one. So this, if you look at this, this is just a, a picture that you guys have this one too. But if you look at leaky gut, that's this one here. And anything that leaks through has to go through the liver. So now all of a sudden we're going to have a liver involved, and that is basically what cleans everything up. It's gonna be on overload. So if you have blood work, you might have elevated liver enzymes. But most of us are not here. If you look at how unhealthy the population is, most of us will be in this area. It's gonna to go to the liver. 
we're going to get all the, the signs and symptoms that we had before that we showed previously with headaches, body aches, and everything else that goes with that. Now, as it goes out, everything is fine. But if it stays in here, now we're going to keep adding more and more to it, and we're going to get sicker and sicker. And we're going to get those allergies, we're going to get those asthmas, we're going to get all those things that kind of come with that. So, so that, that's kind of how that works. Now, next one. Now, this is a questionnaire that you guys have, and it kind of measures to see where you guys are at. Now, if you just do this part, this is the front page, if you just do that one, and, and then you can add it up. You don't have to do it now. You can do it later and just let us know what the numbers were. But this will, it's a real simple screen, but it tells you kind of where you're at. It gives you some simple sim symptoms that you can, well, you, you can feel those or have those every single day. But you can also get rid of them by making some wise choices. And the next one. And this is um, something we put in the, in the binders here too. And this is what I found was if you start writing down what you eat, you pay more attention to it. Because you don't want to write down that you had pie, no. you know, <laughs> ice cream, whatever it might be, right? So if you do this, you get a better idea where you're at and where you should be. I had a patient that, that she did this, but she kept forgetting it. And then finally one day she said it was in the car. So I asked her to go out and get it to bring it in. And it said apple pie, apple pie, oh, okay. apple pie, apple pie. It was <laughs> apple pie everywhere. So she said, well, it was Thanksgiving. And I said, well, that was three months ago. <laughs> so, yeah, she, she had bought a lot of apple pie. Um, now, if we recap everything, if you stay away from the things that we shouldn't have. Now, if you try to do, if you have problems with gluten, don't eat gluten. If you have problems with the stomach acid, we want to fix that, right? So we need to add, add acid to the stomach and digestive enzymes to get things working. If there are problems with lactose, we want to do the same thing. We want to be sure that we get what we should in that so we can break it down. Now, GMO. Should we eat GMO or not? No. It, not if you can help it. We saw all the problems that, that it shows up. And just, I mean, those pictures were, to me, were pretty scary. Most of us think that when it's non-GMO, it's going to be organic, but it isn't. So we have the organic part, we have a non-GMO, and then we have a GMO. But we have GMO in everything. So we're going to have to look at the fine print to see what it says in there. And so it gets more and more scary if you look at it that way because we're going to get sicker and sicker as we keep eating all these things. So we want to try to be sure that we get the stomach working, the, you know, the digestive system or um, digestive enzymes working, and then um, kind of start with that. Now, if we still have issues with the leaky gut and so forth, then we need to take another step and say, okay, we really got to cut these things out and try to clean it back up. And doing the, the food list where it says alkaline forming foods, if you can do that, that would help. Um, the shopping list where you buy the foods that we use for a detox, that would work. At least it would get you in the right direction. Now, if there's still issues, then doing a detox that puts everything back together is another thing that you can do. So, so uh, if they do the, the detox, for example, they stick to the shopping list because they want you to get away from everything else. But then they add some other um, supplements to basically pull out the heavy metals to get rid of everything else that you have so you can heal up. And uh, so there, there's lots of alternatives that you can have to try to get things to work right. But the key ones you've seen today that you want to try to stay away from if you want to get better. And this reflects on, on everything, like I said, from skin conditions to joint pain to diabetes, heart disease, and cancers.